back to Rating the List, where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we're going to be examining number 74 from AFI's 100 Years, 100 Passions, the top 100 love stories of all time. All right, and number 74 is Woman of the Year, released in 1942, directed by George Stevens, starring Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy. So, the synopsis for this romantic dramedy is as follows. Tess Harding, played by Katherine Hepburn, and Sam Craig, played by Spencer Tracy, are journalists for the New York Chronicle. Tess is the highly educated daughter of a former ambassador, well-traveled and speaks several languages, which serves her well as a political affairs columnist. Sam is a blue-collar sports writer. After Tess suggests baseball be abolished for the duration of the war on a radio show, Sam leaps to the sports defense. They are summoned to the editor's office and told to play nice. There is an instant attraction and Sam invites Tess to a Yankees game, trying in vain to explain the rules of the game in the press box. Tess later invites Sam to her apartment that night. He thinks this is a date, but it's a cocktail party where guests discuss world issues in many languages. Sam quietly leaves. She sends him champagne and asks him to drive her to the airport so he can kiss her goodbye. On the drive back, Sam hits it off with Tess's Aunt Ellen, who advises him to marry the girl. Sam envisions a small personal, personable wedding that quickly turns into a production to fit into her schedule and her senator father's. They are married in South Carolina at a justice, justice of the peace and their wedding night is disrupted by the arrival of a Yugoslavian statesman who has fled the Nazis and his European entourage. Helpless, Sam invites his friends who don't exactly mix with Tessa's crowd. Conflict, <clears throat> conflicts big and small arise because of Tessa's priorities and Sam's place in her life. Tess floats the idea of a child which Sam is warm to until he learns she's already agreed to adopt a Greek refugee who speaks no English. Before they can discuss the situation, news arrives that Tess has been named America's Outstanding Woman of the Year. Tess plans to leave the boy alone while they they go to the awards gala, but Sam refuses to leave the boy alone. When, When she is at the gala, Sam returns the boy to the orphanage where he is excited to see his friends again. Tess returns home with a following of photographers to learn both the boy and Sam are gone. She attempts to reclaim the boy, but he refuses. The next day, she receives a telegram from her father summoning her home. Sam declines to join, stating that their marriage has been neither perfect or a marriage. Tess comes to learn her long-widowed father and her aunt are finally getting married that night. While watching their beautiful ceremony, Tess is moved to tears. She drives through the night and arrives at Sam's Riverside apartment. She attempts to cook breakfast to disastrous results. She wakes Sam with the clutter and confesses her wedding experience and newfound inspiration to serve only as his wife. He asks her to walk back her overbearing dedication and simply balance her life so he has a place in it. Okay, so... um. This was this one was a little bit interesting for me because yeah. I think I think it it wrote I, I was kind of watching you when we were watching yeah because I was really afraid I was it, afraid it, it, <laughs> it, like she's talked about in some of our previous episodes they start out with this really strong female character and then they kind of just knock her in the head and you know uh, take her out of it the story takes a turn and they actually don't do that in this no one. they do not and they really flip the script mm-hmm. um, it's basically this very independent strong woman who is um very dedicated to her work and she falls in love with this guy and they're they're kind of similar in a way and their job means a lot to them however she she can't figure out how to weave him into her she, life she has because no, she has no work life balance. She has no work life balance because she's an independent woman and is used to taking care of herself and used to doing what she wants to do all the time. So it's hard for her to like get this guy into her life. And um 
I think it can be pretty accurate. Like, I think women do struggle with that quite a bit. And I, I, I know a lot of younger women who have, they've done all the other stuff. They've got a career. They're educated. Yeah. And this is the hurdle that they can't get past is they've, they've got to figure out how to integrate another person into their life who does two things one elevates their life so there's no point just regardless of who you're attracted to or what you want out of life there's no point in getting into a relationship if the other person doesn't elevate your life Mm -hmm. if they don't elevate your life don't do it no not not worth worth it. it yeah so there's that and the second one is is they have to be willing to meet in the middle yeah they and it's I, I think I struggled with this at the beginning of our oh, relationship. <laughs> okay. Um, I at struggled the, with this. At the beginning of our relationship. I t- I'm better. I'm way better now. <laughs> I had a hard time because for a very long time, I mean, we didn't get married until I, we were 31. 31. So for a very long time, I was just taking care of myself and worrying about what I was doing and hanging out with my friends. That's That was my whole life. So... Working in a, a, a very healthy relationship with someone was, it took me a while to figure out my balance. So I, I totally get this whole character. Yeah, and uh, as the guy who's had to deal with the woman who's, you know, very independent and, you know, has a life that doesn't revolve around being in a relationship... Spencer Tracy nails this performance. He really does. Way ahead of his time. This this whole this whole story, this whole relationship yeah. was way ahead of its time. This his portrayal could have devolved into misogynistic mm-hmm. bullshit and male macho toxic and it bullshit didn't at all. And it doesn't like he, there's never a point where he says some pretty pointed things to her, mm-hmm. but he says really fair things to her. Fair and, he and, and never accurate. Ac- fair, accurate, and he never attacks her personally. He never no. tells her not to do these things. His whole his whole point the whole time is like, look, I want to be a part of your life, mm-hmm. but I have to be a part of your life. Right. You've got to figure out there's some stuff that you're just going to have to decide is not as important as me. I you know he he's perfectly like he you can tell right from the beginning he knows that he is never going to be at the very top of things for her like her career is her the most important thing in her life and he he knows that he respects that he went in with open eyes knowing that yes but he did have the expectation that there's going to be a there's going to be room for him and early on in the relationship that there really isn't room for him and, you know, a lot of it's played for laughs, and, you know, he, he just has this exasperated look on his face for quite a while. And he yeah, never, like, uh, he never gets, he, yeah. never, he never, like, loses his cool. Mm-hmm. He plays it all off, but, you know, eventually he just You can tell that he's very frustrated. Yeah. And um, I think that um, it kind of is, like, very reverse roles, too, because Catherine Hepburn's, like, buying him presents and, like sending him things yeah. to apologize yeah, they, which is they, t- t- typically like they do a lot a male of, they do a lot of stuff in this so they you know they've got two people that you know he's very smart but he's blue he's obviously blue collar he writes mm-hmm. about sports which is not seen as highbrow she is like you know her dad used to be or her mom used to be like an ambassador her dad's a senator she's ivy league educated she speaks like four or five different languages. She's world traveled. She knows all these like mm-hmm. important people from all over the world. And, you know, he's kind of the guy that, you know, he talks about, you know, the baseball game, you know, in great detail and with good points and stuff like that. But he does that at the bar. And he talks yeah. with, you know, the guy behind the bar who, you know, is this boxer. And, you know, those are the kinds of people that he's, he Yeah, he's with. very like... I'm, I'm hanging out with my homies and then that's that's yeah. what I do. And she's very social and mm. she's like talking to everybody in different languages and she's like the more the merrier. Right. Right? And he's like, sure, but 
when we're together and I want alone yeah. time, right. like, like like when they all the people come to their it's like it's their honeymoon. wedding it's their wedding night and you know yeah. you have certain reasonable expectations yes. like on your wedding night that certain things are gonna happen right and all of a sudden this you know he he's like you know they're both like getting ready and taking showers and stuff like that and he goes to the bedroom there's like a freaking yugoslavian statesman sitting yeah. on his bed <laughs> with like all these like yeah. you know this like whole entourage and he's just like this is the biggest cock block moment of, of like of all time and he's like what do you do you you, yeah. you just join it you know yeah and uh yeah the only thing that I felt was very weird was the whole adopting this Greek kid was... I understand that they were trying to make a point. On it. Okay. That was like Phantom Siri. Working on that. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. Um. Anyway, I understand I was trying to make the point that that was her like bottom. Yeah. Right? Like... He's like, okay, that's it. I am, I'm yeah, done. Yeah, I mean that, that's one of those things where it's like, you have these moments sometimes where, one person or the other makes like a decision on something where you're like, I'm a little irritated that mm -hmm. that decision was made without me. Yeah. And then there's, she adopted a kid. Like a full grown boy. Like a child. Mm -hmm. And the way that she presented it was, you know, to ask him if he was interested in children. And he's thinking, oh, wow, she, oh, she wants, wants to get pregnant. She wants to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm definitely warm to that idea. Let's, like, start talking about it. And then she throws out the, she brings in the kid. She's like, here's Chris. <laughs> and he's like, what? Yeah. Like, And then he gives them back to the orphanage. And I feel like there should have been an additional conversation there. Like, I just think that. You know, well, I think, that would have been... Well, I think the reason he brought the kid to the orphanage is he has decided that he's leaving the marriage. Right. And he knows that that poor kid, there's no way that he survives without someone right. there. The kid doesn't speak any English. He is going to be left alone with the help at best. And it's yeah. like, there's no way that, like, she is going to be... Like, if she can't be around... For a grown man who's her husband, she is not going to be there for a child. Well, I feel like that that whole little snippet of storyline was really unresolved. I feel like they should have had a conversation or something. Well, they were going to remember, and yeah. then she got the call that she's you know, you know, been named you know outstanding woman of the yeah, year, that's and true. then you know all the details of the gala, and she's like, oh, we got to go to the gala, and he's like, we can't go to the gala. We've got this kid now. What are we well, going to do with him? Well, we're just going to leave the kid. And, he's, and she's like, well, just leave him here alone. And he's like, no, I'm not leaving the kid alone. Mm -hmm. You don't leave this child alone. He can't speak English. He's like seven or eight years old. Yeah. He can't be by himself yet. Can you imagine what kind of collateral that is, though, in the rest of your marriage? Mm -hmm. Where, like, she's, like, arguing with him and he's like, hey, you, remember that time, time you brought, brought the kid home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you... <laughs> that's like the... That's like the... That's like the... <laughs> <laughs> In case of emergency, break glass. Yeah. He's like, hey, remember that time you adopt a kid without letting me know? Yeah. Remember, remember that? Remember Chris? <laughs> remember, remember Chris, that Greek kid you adopted, didn't tell me about it? You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my I God. Remember, I remember that. <laughs> anyway, so it was a good movie. Um, one of the fun facts that I learned while watching this movie was, I guess Spencer Tracy was a huge alcoholic. Oh, he was massive alcoholic. So he would drink, uh, he would drink the whole time they were shooting, and between takes, Catherine Hepburn would bring him tea to help, like... Yeah, so it's really interesting that we've got two movies on this list that feature them. Yeah. So this is the one where they met, mm -hmm. and you can see it on screen. You mm -hmm. can see them falling in love on screen. Their chemistry is insane. Yeah. I mean, like, I typically don't believe, like, we've had a lot of movies where it's, the, they fall in love, like, way, way, way fast. Oh, God, yeah. This one I buy immediately, because you yeah. can see it like, oh, they had that moment. Yep. Like, yep. we had that moment. Yes, we did. But we also, like, had been, like, talking on the phone and emailing each other for, like, a month before... Before we met. We met and had that moment. They didn't really know each other, but I bought it in this movie. I yes. I, I tend not to. I bought it in this movie. Well, they were kind of flirting through... Yeah, a little bit. Their, their 
articles a, maybe a, li- a little bit a little bit yeah. but then they you know as soon as they meet you know like the editors all like serious and they're just kind of like oh uh, yeah like oh okay. yeah we can play nice yeah yeah um so this is where they met spencer tracy was he was technically married still at this point but he was not living with his wife they had been separated for many many years um due to some stuff that happened with their child and this is when he and Catherine Hepburn started their like 26 year affair and then uh, guess who's coming to dinner it's his very last performance and she's in it as well mm-hmm. he died 17 years later so this 17 kind of, days or 17 days excuse me 17 days later so those two movies kind of bookmark mm-hmm. the, the length of their relationship it's kind of it also kind of bookmarks our list yeah this list kind of a little bit okay yeah all right, so um, I gave this one a 66. Jerry gave it a 69. The score is 67.5. Yeah. So um, what did we, how did we watch this? Did we rent this one too? I we did can't rent remember. This one. Okay, you can rent it on Amazon Prime. It's a very good movie. Um, it's, it's, uh, it kept my interest the whole time. Kind of ahead of its time. It really is. They really, like, I was so scared at the end that they were going to be like, okay, I'm going to be barefoot and pregnant now, you know, and forget my career. I yeah. was so scared that was going to happen, but it didn't at all. And it was it was actually, he did he did the thing that you should do when you're in that position. It's yeah. like, look, I don't want you to give this up. I just want a little, I just want to be a piece of it. Yep, yeah. So instead of going from one extreme where you're not paying attention to me to trying to be, you know, you know the you know sally homemaker let's meet in the middle yes your extremes don't work yeah because one you know one i'm not a part of and two you can't even make freaking coffee or pancakes so, <laughs> so yeah. let's meet in the middle and figure it out yeah and that i think that is it's a great message for anyone who's in a relationship yeah it's really really good highly recommend it um yeah so uh if you've seen this movie and you want to let us know what you thought please like and uh, comment, um, subscribe to our channel if you want to hear some really cool insights on some movies that maybe you know you haven't watched or haven't heard of. Uh, please, you know, subscribe to our channel. Um, if you want to email us, you can email us at ratingthelist at gmail um, Yeah, I think that's it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Jerry. I'm Brad. And we'll see you later. Bye.